Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorn. Today we're talking eight things that everyone needs in order to reach a healthy state of flow. So, Alfred Maslow had a theory that we all needed eight core things in order to feel happiness. That meant before we had these things, we could not feel a complete sense of fulfillment or meaning or well-being. And so he argued that we had eight needs that we needed to focus on, and we needed to focus on them in a certain order. He saw that some needs came before others, and that once we had acquired a certain need, we would reach in energy and motivation, feeling a bit more happy and a bit more content than we did before. The first need Alfred Maslow posted was the physiological. Yeah, we all need a healthy set of sleep every day. We all need to eat at certain times. We all need to remember to drink water and to take care of ourselves. When we fail to neglect the physiological, all else seems to fall apart. It doesn't matter how individuated or how successful you are. If you forget to sleep, it's going to take a toll on you. The fact is people who struggle to sleep or to rest tend to perform worse cognitively and tend to experience lower well-being. Similarly, people that eat unhealthy or that struggle with these base physiological things tend to struggle as a result. We're all human and we all ultimately need this thing more than anything else, so we can never really forget about these things, no matter how much we would like to want to. Number two, security. Ultimately, we all want to feel safe. We all need trust, we all need comfort, we all need to be able to have and to acquire safety. However, we cannot always affect our mental surroundings or our environment. So what we need to do is we need to develop a sense of inner security and inner safety. And so if you're struggling with a low amount of trust or if you're struggling with not feeling safe, something that can be really helpful is to establish a set of ritual practices in your day-to-day -day life, routines and things that you can do to feel comfort and to feel safe. That means creating a space for yourself where you can be yourself. That means establishing healthy relationships with other people, people who you trust, and building and making sure that other people can trust you. By focusing on your personal example and by living and radiating trust towards other people, you can also create more trusting and safe relationships with other people. And that brings us to need number three, which is belonging. Ultimately, we're social creatures. Aristotle called us political animals, and there is some truth to that. We tend to be people that need other people. And so even if uh, we would like to believe that we could just uh, go on a private island and live alone forever, we tend to crave social belonging and we tend to need to have groups and people in our lives. However, it's important to know that you can be yourself in groups and simply trying to force yourself to fit a group or a social environment can lead to making you feel more lonely than you were before. So it's important to find the right kind of groups and people who you can be yourself with. Ultimately, your goal is to be able to hang out with anyone, no matter how different they are from you, but to remain strong in yourself and secure in yourself. The truth is, people that follow their own path and listen to their own voice tend to get in anywhere. People that are securing themselves tend to be able to travel across different groups and societies and tend to be able to mingle with or connect with anyone. But people who tend to doubt themselves a lot and often feel insecure about themselves tend to struggle more with repression and with trauma and with being cut off from others. And so that kind of insecurity can become a problem. So once again, focus on how you can go inside to create a sense of inner belonging and trust and self-acceptance. And once you have that base self-acceptance down and once you trust yourself and once you appreciate yourself more, learn to set boundaries and to form relationships and connections with people that verify and accept those boundaries and that accept you for how you are and who you see yourself as. Rule number four for happiness is esteem. Ultimately, we all need to feel capable. We need to feel confident. We need to feel that we are talented and have talent and have power in our world. Feeling powerless can really break a person's sense of flow and happiness. A sense of incompetence or not being good enough can make it hard to cope in the real world. So Maslow argued that it was after establishing a healthy space of self-acceptance, it was important to 
in that space of self-acceptance, find a place or an area where you were confident and where you were skilled. Everyone has something that they enjoy doing and that they value and care about and feel passionate about. And if you can respect your needs and who you are and pursue and apply yourself in those situations, you'll find that you become more and more skilled. Some say that we need up to 10,000 hours to develop skill in something. And the reason why we never really feel a sense of esteem is because we often quit or give up. We put in the first hours and we notice that we're not as good as everyone else. We feel that other people seem to be doing much better and that other people seem so great. How could we possibly compete with that? But the truth is they've had those same thousand hours as you do. And with time, you have the capacity to become really good at something if you really, really care about it and really, really want to. Number five, people are actually not just searching for esteem, but they're also searching for cognition or cognitive skill. And that's why we tend to gravitate towards wanting to understand. People have intellectual needs just as well as they have desire for capacity. We want to understand and know things. We want to keep up with the media and to know about our surroundings. We want to understand how the world works, how physics works, how nature works and how society works. If you don't know how political systems are structured or how the economy works or how to pay your taxes or how to manage and deal with different cognitive tasks, that can be a struggle. And so it's very important to take time to apply yourself also cognitively. Of course, it's great to be practically accomplished and to have and to be strong and to have something you're good at, but you also need to know how to vote and how voting works and which parties want what in order to make educated decisions. And you also want to have a sense of understanding of society and how the world works in order to make an educated choice. If you don't know about these things, it can be easy to feel a sense of doubt and uncertainty, especially in these times of fake news. There is so much fabricated news online and in the world today. And how do we tell truth from falsehoods? The truth is we all need to learn to do our own research, to criticize and question things and to figure out things for ourselves. So we need to tr learn to trust our own voice and ability to find our own truth and to understand things. Of course, we'll get things wrong. Sometimes you're gonna get lost. Sometimes you're gonna show bias. Sometimes you're gonna misunderstand things. And sometimes what you read will not be correct, but it's a step in progress. It's a way to learn and it's a way to challenge your mind to grow. So learn to be comfortable with using your own mind and don't rely too much on other people to tell you what the world works or how the world works. Instead, try to learn to think for yourself. Number six, besides cognitive needs, we also have aesthetic needs. The truth is, people that are highly intellectual tend to be also highly artistic. Take for example, Jordan Peterson, who makes his own art and music. Everyone has and needs aesthetics and art and needs cultural expression and cultural needs are just as important as intellectual or cognitive needs. We might scoff at poetry or art or other things as unimportant or trivial, but the truth is, when people develop themselves, they tend to gradually grow an increased respect for nature and beauty and art and artistic expression. We've been drawing since prehistoric times on walls. We've been fascinated with how the world looks. And through aesthetics, we also learn to develop a sense of qualia, and that means you move from a cognitive understanding of yes and no and true and false to a more nuanced and in-depth understanding of the world. When we start to address and grow cognitively, we also learn to see and imagine things in greater color and more vividly. And so aesthetic needs are highly important and cultural needs and fiction and art and all those things can help you develop that sense of nuance. Once we've acquired all these needs, Individuation is put on the table, because ultimately the question is, who are we? What is uniquely us? While we can understand beauty and while we can think and reason about the world intellectually, who are we and what is our role in the world? What is our unique purpose or identity? When we know and we have a grasp of our cognitive skill and ability, as well as a sense of beauty and an artistic instrument inside ourselves, we also see that we are ultimately more than aesthetic or cognitive beings, individual beings. That means we have a personality, we have values, we have 
unique interests and thoughts that are our very own, things that make us different from the tribe at large. Individuation means knowing and understanding your full totality of being, and that's a fuller understanding than just understanding, for example, that you're an introvert or an extrovert. It's understanding that you are both. So, when you reach individuation, you learn to understand that you have multiple sides to yourself, that you're a complex person with multiple sides and personality traits, and often personality traits that can be slightly contradictory. Yeah, you're a contradictory person with many different urges and needs and personality traits and quirks that make you a very, very unique person. And the more you develop yourself and the more you provide for yourself the things you need, the more you'll see just how unique you are. Individuation goes beyond that too, and it means being able to apply yourself in the world and to create a space for yourself where you can be totally yourself. The truth is, most people would find that their job or situation or work or lifestyle is actually a poor fit for their needs and their personality. Most of us feel that we need to compromise ourselves to fit in in the world, but individuated people have created a space for themselves where they can do what they love. Individuated people have the capacity to really apply themselves in the world and to follow and trust their own path. They are strong and secure in themselves and they trust their own judgment. And they only compromise when they need to and in the situation. In the general, in the whole, they're able to stay true to their own path, their own needs and what they want in the world in order to be happy and fulfilled. After we become individuated, we hit upon the final stage of personal development, and that is transcendence. It is said that when a dancer is fully immersed in their act, they lose themselves in it. They become not just themselves dancing, but also the people they are dancing with. They become one with the crowd. And similarly, a musician in an orchestra might find that they're no longer just one person playing an instrument, but they are the whole orchestra. They are every person in the room. They hear and pick up on every tune and they become one with the rhythm. Transcendence is similar to that. It's an understanding of who you are, a fuller understanding of who you are, that goes beyond the self. The truth is, we are not just ourselves. We are also our projections and perception of the world around us. And so, we are and know that we have a deep sense of connection to the world. With the stage of transcendence, we learn to connect with the world as who we are. And we learn to flow with and to be one with the world as it is. And so transcended people have the capacity to work with their environment and approach the world functionally. They see everyone as they are and they understand everyone for who they are. And they know how to vibe with and move with the environment in flow. As a result, transcended people experience no anger or resentment towards the world. People are the way they are, and transcended people know and understand how to navigate the complicated intricacies of humanity and our struggles. Transcended people also know exactly what a person needs at exactly at the right time. And so transcended people know how to provide and to give people what they need. Transcended people try little to control the world. They don't care about controlling the world. They rather find a way to adjust and adapt to where the world as is. It is futile to try to control the world or to try to make it into something that it's not. And it's important to learn your place in the world and how and why you were placed here, what your purpose is to this place and environment. So which of these eight needs is most important to you right now and how could you further develop yourself tomorrow? Learn more about flow and your needs by watching these videos and don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Thank you so much for watching.